YouTube, it's Amber, and welcome to a Get Ready With Me Mother's Day Appropriate Makeup. I've had multiple requests to do a purple eye look, and so I chose beautiful shades that'll look absolutely stunning for Mother's Day. They will be glasses appropriate, and I give you multiple options as far as lip colors, um, tips for making your eyes look brighter, all that. So lots of information in this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it, and if you would like to see how I created this look using Project Pan Makeup, go on and keep watching. All right, guys, let's go on and get started. I'll show you glasses appropriate makeup. It's beautiful for Mother's Day if you're looking for a purple spring look, and if you want something the glasses appropriate, you're in the right place. Um, these are tips and tricks that I do that work for me. So let's go on and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I use my NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil in Milk to basically brighten up my um, inner portion of my eye and my brow bone. Be able to use your pencil down in the very last little bit. Go on and get yourself a metal spatula of some kind. You can use like a letter opener. Um, you can buy, if you buy the Z Palette um, Sephora themed makeup palette from the website, you'll get one of these little metal um, spatula things that has a flat end and a pointed end. These are great if you want to depot your shadows and also to repress them. I should do a video on that. Um, but since this thing has been such a booger to get the um, eyeshadow primer out of, what I do with the tip is I go through, I sprayed it with alcohol before we came on to sanitize it, and then I scoop it down into the pencil like this to get the tiniest little bit. Can y'all see that? And then I rub it onto my fingers to warm it up and apply it to my eyes. And that way you can use these pencils down further because I know a lot of people complain that you can't get them down to the bottom. And that kind of irritated me that I couldn't even sharpen it, you know, once I got past the tip. So I'm trying to use my makeup. I wanted to do the best I could. So, all right, what I'm going to do with this is just like in my mint, get ready with me. Um, I stamp this into my inner corner because when you wear glasses, you need to brighten up this entire area. I also stamp this onto my brow bone because just highlighting the inner corners of your eyes is not enough if you wear glasses. You have lots of shadow in this area from your frames, so you need to do a little bit extra to brighten that up to look your most flattering. All right, don't ever be afraid to wear your glasses. You can make your makeup absolutely stunning and still wear your frames. A lot of people are under the impression that the two cannot go hand in hand, but they can. Okay, so we've gone on and highlighted the inner portion of the eye. As you can see, my eyes are quite a bit brighter. They'll really become pronounced once I put the shadow on top. Um, but this is just to give you like a beautiful, stunning glow without being like, Boom, eyeshadow, you know what I mean? For this look, pull out a lilac cream shadow. This is Benefit's Creaseless Cream Shadow and Always a Bridesmaid, but you can use whatever you want. You can use Lavish Lavender from the Maybelline Color Tattoos if you bought the limited edition summer shades. Makeup Forever has a beautiful lilac shade. Buxom uh, Cream Shadow has a beautiful lilac shade, and I'm trying to think NARS may have one, and then I think um, Ulta has a lilac shade that I saw, and ooh, I'm trying to think what else. I'll think of it in just a little bit. Maybe Stila? I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I happen to use um, Always a Bridesmaid from Benefit, and all I do with this is I use this on my lid just to put some color down, and I know this white looks crazy on the bridge of my nose. I promise you when I blend it out, it's not going to be that scary. I'll just kind of take it in a little bit so it's not quite so in your face. But you want it to be bright, just FYI. Then I take it on my middle finger again, go over my other eye. I love this creaseless cream shadow. Um, in the future, as I make it through more of my color tattoos, I would like to purchase more of these um, creaseless cream shadows. I did buy... Um, a buxom shade for the summer since I ran out of my bold gold color tattoo. So I'll keep you posted on how I feel about buxom. But I know Strawberry Sweet in particular loves her buxom cream shadow and it's um, very similar 
to this shade. It's a little bit darker, but very similar. So check out her video if you want. It didn't come out of the Too Faced Romantic Eyes palette, but I have depotted them. So I will give you the color names, and if you don't have the Too Faced Romantic Eyes palette, you can find similar shades in other palettes. They're not difficult shades to find. Um, the first one that I'm gonna choose is from the classic section of that palette. It has the pink, the lilac purple, and the matte purple shade. The first one I'm going to use as a crease transition color is Beautiful Shade in Kiss the Bride. If you have the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette, there is a beautiful pink shade you can use. If you have the Too Faced Bonbons palette, there's a beautiful pink shade you can use. Or if you have just a matte baby pink shadow like this, it's beautiful and perfect for this look. You don't have to go with Too Faced Romantic Eyes Shadow. Any matte pink that you have will look incredible. So go on and pull that out. Let me get my eyeshadow brush here to go on and pack this onto, actually let me use this one. All right, I take a flat shader brush and what I do is I just pop this in my crease area. It's gonna make my crease color easier to blend out. You don't need to put it to your brow bone. You don't need to put it all over your lid. Just do your crease area. And I just kind of tap it in the shadow because the Too Faced shadows tend to have more fallout than I'd like. They're not real buttery. They're smooth, but they're not as buttery as say Urban Decay or, or Stila. So I just kind of sweep that into my crease area. And I go through with this beautiful shade called Cut the Cake. This um, duplicate shade is also in the Too Faced Bon Bons palette if you do not have the Romantic Eyes palette. Um, when I finished my a uh, little rectangular pan out of the Romantic Eyes palette. I went on and depotted my Bon Bon's palette so I could specifically get this color. But this is a beautiful, there's a tiny bit of shimmer in it, so if you have a shimmery lilac color, by all means, pull it out. It'll be absolutely beautiful. So, I dip my brush into this, kind of pat it. Kind of, and there's a lot of fallout with this. And then I press it onto my lid. I do not swipe it, I press. And that way I get the most accurate control. Very, very concentrated color because again, with my glasses, I need to be very deliberate with my eyeshadow. If you watched my um, Get Ready With Me, if not, I'll go on and link it in the description box below. Because I know like a lot of people have asked me tips and tricks for wearing makeup with glasses since a lot of us choose not to wear glasses because we feel like we're stuck in the boring beige and you know, no makeup <laughs> days, and you don't have to be. Okay, so here's this beautiful lilac color. Then, favorite color of all. I love Too Faced matte shades because they blend beautifully. Um, I picked this deep purple shade called First Dance. And again, like, you don't have to go with this particular color if you have a matte purple by all means. There's a purple shade in the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette you could use. There is a purple shade in the Too Faced Bon Bon's palette. You could use Hustle from your Naked palette. Um, I went on and stuck with this one because this is a brighter um, matte purple. Like I'll show you. This is what it looks like. It's not plum, but it's not like bright in your face purple. It's absolutely perfect. It'll make your eyes sparkle if you have brown eyes. If you have blue eyes, it'll bring out the blue. Green eyes, purple works really well for you as well. And then hazel, you can wear anything. Let's be honest. That's why I'm excited for my daughter because she has hazel eyes and I'm like, makeup is gonna open so many doors for her. Okay, so basically what I do with this, since I wear glasses and I have hooded eyes, I basically stamp my crease shade into the corner like so. Can y'all see that? I stamp it up a little bit higher and then I blend it into the center of my eye. Because that way when you look at me with my frames on, you can see that I have definition in the outer corner of my crease, but my eye doesn't look punched out with a smoke, you know, a smoky look. Because um, we have to be very careful with our shadow. I'm going to go on and change my brush. I went on and I brought out um, a different crease brush, but I'm gonna use my other one, so let me try this again. 
Okay, you stamp it and then blend it up. You see what I mean? And that way with your frames, with the brightness in the center of your face, to the mid-tone, to the dark, it will look very balanced once you put your frames back on. All right, and then go over to the other side, stamp, kind of stamp the outer third of your eye, bring it up, and sweep it across. Very, very easy. This was kind of a trick I had to adopt as I was relearning how to wear my makeup with glasses because when I got pregnant um, with each one of my children, contacts were absolutely horrible for me to wear. My eyes were so dry and irritated. Um, and so I had to resign to, you know, fixing and tweaking my makeup to where it would look my most flattering with glasses. And I got the most compliments once I started brightening up my eye and then keeping the dark just to the outer edges of my eyes. And your eyeshadow so much that you can't see the definition, but you do want to go in enough and just blend out the edges where it's not like a crazy line. But under your glasses, you can get away with having a little bit heavier of an eyeshadow line so that you can see the definition. Because again, your frames are going to take away from your actual eyeshadow look. Like if you look at me with my frames on right now, you need to be able to see some definition. Okay? As far as my highlighting shade, if you bought one of the MAC Archie blushes, pull it out, or if you have a really frosty pink shade, this is the Archie Girls um, Veronica's blush. I bought this last year and I actually used it as a highlight for my eyes and my cheeks and the rest of my face. It looks like this. As long as you get a color that is close enough to this, you can use eyeshadow. Just make sure it's really frosty pink. You want it to be super bright, super shimmery. It'll look crazy stunning with this look. All right? So what I do with this is I take a, it's like the equivalent of a MAC 217. I dip it into the, I'm trying to figure this out. I dip it into the frosty pink shade like this. I go through and I highlight my brow bone. That's the one thing, you can multitask these products so easily. Use eyeshadow as highlighter. You know, use highlighters as eyeshadow. And I mean, it's just, it's crazy. And then I go through and do the other side, do my brow bone. And when I do my inner corner, I make sure to stamp it and fan it up. Because again, you want that brightness in the center of your face. Okay, all right, eye look is done. So then what I do is I go through with my foundation brush, clean up any fallout I might have. And I still wanted to incorporate some of my Project Pan makeup so that I keep using it. It was so hard not to grab my Project Pan makeup when I started doing my makeup this morning, but my MAC Black Track Fluid Line, Perfect Gel Liner. I also have the Bobbi Brown Black Mauve Shiver, Shimmer Ink Eyeliner, um, but I really wanted to use this instead because, you know, Project Pan makeup and I wanted to stick to some things. We get my um, Sonia Kashuk Synthetic Eyeliner Brush that has an angled tip on it. It's real easy to apply this way. Dip it into my eyeliner and I just line the tops of my lashes like so. Eyeliner with Creep from my makeup palette because I want to make sure that this liner is bulletproof all day long and it helps me use creep. So I go through and I just tap creep onto the top of that line I made with the MAC fluid line. No must, no fuss, very easy. Go through on this side is I take my Maybelline Age or Instant Age Rewind Concealer in the brightening shade and I twist up a little bit. I apply it to my under eyes in a triangle formation because if you wear glasses, again, you want to bring brightness to counteract those shadows of your frames. So go under your eyes in that triangle formation. So you're gonna look like a raccoon for a second, but don't worry. It'll blend out and be beautiful. And then what you're going to do, make sure my um, or my finger is nice and clean since I wiped that purple shadow on it. 
Okay, then what you're gonna do is take your ring finger so you have gentle pressure. This area on your face is very, very delicate. You don't wanna just be rough with it. But you're gonna take your concealer and rub it in to blend in that triangle form. You don't want it to be obvious that you have concealer there, but you want to see the, the highlight, you know, the definite highlight. And again, this is a good tip, even if you're not a glasses wearer, because especially as you start having crow's feet or if you're a young mom and you're not getting enough sleep, this will bring enough light up to your eyes where your face doesn't look droopy and tired. It's that Kim Kardashian trick. Because you wonder how that woman gets enough sleep with as many things as she's involved with. So, all right. So as you can see, you have that nice brightening effect. To set it, I just go over with what's left in my foundation container. I take a Real Techniques buffing brush, swish it around, tap off the excess, and I just tap on top. I try not to move the concealer too much, so I tap. Tap on both sides, and then I blend. And you get a really beautiful application where your eyes aren't really shadowy. I do suffer from dark circles. I have small children at home. I don't sleep well at night because um, I suffer from insomnia. And part of it is like totally my fault because that's my only downtime during the day. So I like to stay up and watch YouTube. I like to read and um, we cut cable. So TV's not really a big deal anymore, but um, I stay up too late because that's my downtime. And so my face suffers for it in the morning. To keep my eyes insanely bright, I would line my waterline with the NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil in Milk. But like I said, since you can see the inside that I'm scraping it out, that would be really difficult to do. So I'm just gonna use my Rimmel Nude Coal Eyeliner Pencil and line my waterline. I prefer the brightening effect of the white with this silvery eyeshadow. Um, when you wear more silvery tones, the white is more striking and looks prettier. But like I said, I'm trying not to open too many things right now. The tip I do to make my the brown in my eyes stand out is I line my lower lash line with the Maybelline Color Tattoo in Ready, Set, Green. This came out, I believe, in the Fall 2012 collection. Yes, because I was wearing it. It came out with like the jewel tones, but this is what it looks like. If you have a green eyeshadow, like if you have Bender from your Urban Decay um, Book of Shadows 4, that would be beautiful, or if you have mildew, any green, or if you have another green cream shadow, it looks beautiful when you pair it with the silvery purple and the pink. So all I do with this, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a Sonia Kasha eyeliner brush. This is a little bit of a more wide tip than that other angled eyeliner brush. I dip it into the color tattoo. Quick tip, if you are struggling with your color tattoos drying out, you can revive them with Visine eye drops. Just drop a couple of eye drops into your um, cream shadow, take your metal spatula that's been sanitized, mix it up really well, and you are good to go. All right, so just quick tip of the day. A lot of people have been asking me what I do when um, my shadows dry out. Okay, so basically all I'm gonna do with this is I'm just going to line my lower lash line real easy. I only go halfway across because my eyes are smaller and almond shaped and I want my eyes to appear bigger and brighter under my frame. So lining all the way across for me closes my eyes. But if you like to line your eyes all the way across, that's up to you. It will look beautiful either way. I'm going to do as far as my bronzer, I'm putting in my Project Pan bronzer because this doesn't show up but I'm still using it. This is the e.l.f. Golden Bronzer. Just kind of do a, whatever bronzer you use all over your face just to kind of warm it up. I go through like this and just do, as you can see, this isn't showing up at all. But I wanted to project pan a little bit longer because, I don't know, let me change my mind. 
My preferred bronzer is the Sonia Kashuk Undetectable Cream Bronzer. You've heard me talk about that product ad nauseum. Um, but I wanted to project pan this a little bit, a little bit longer. So I just warm up my face a little bit. Then I'm gonna go through with my Sonia Kashuk Angled Blush Brush with my Too Faced uh, Chocolate Soleil. Looks like so. I'm going to do a video on this about making the most of your Project Pan makeup, repressing your shadows so that you don't have the ring around the pan because as you get down to the very bottom of your pan, it gets hard to use that ring. So I'll do a tips and tricks video. Um, so stay tuned for that on how I um, repress my shadows to make every last swipe count out of my products because I do this with eyeshadow too. So I take my bronzer, go through, highlight along the backs of my contour because when you're wearing your glasses, again, your glasses dominate the front part of your face. You want to bring some focus to the backs of your cheeks so that way it's not just glasses. So you want to highlight towards the back of your cheekbones. See what I mean? Right back here. Do the other side. Stay at the back of your cheekbone and kind of fan it up. And then you're going to want to go through with the corners of your face and bronze because your glasses take away and you don't want your frames to be the, the dominant focus on your face. You want your eyes to be the focus. As far as blush, um, you have several options. You can use the Radiant Orchid trend with this look. So like for mine, I've been project panning the Market Jacobs blush in Outspoken. The Orchid trend would work really well with this. If you want a bright pink blush, that's what I did last year. Um, you could use one of the pink hearts out of your Veronica's blush. Um, I chose to wear the NARS blush in the color Gaiety. It's a really bright bubblegum pink. So I'm going to go on and do that because that works the best with the um, highlighter that I'm using. But the Orchid Trend works well too. I just take this on the back of my cheekbones to brighten up my face. I want to do the other side and you can be a little bit more heavy handed with your blush when you wear glasses because your contouring needs to be more deliberate. And then as far as highlighting, I take a Real Techniques contour brush. I go back in with this Veronica's blush into the shimmery pink and I highlight my cheekbones over here on top of my brows, down my nose, my chin, and I go back through with the same brush that I used to highlight my eyes, and I do my cupid's bow. Again, multitask, multitask, multitask. You don't have to have a brush for every single portion of your face. And then it makes it easier when you wash your brushes when you don't have 30 brushes to wash. Because that alone makes it less tempting to wash them. All we need to do is apply some mascara. I went on and I bought myself a new tube of the Lancome Lash Primer because I finished mine and I love this stuff. So I'm gonna go through and do my lash primer. Oh my gosh, to have a new tube of this. It feels so good putting this on the lashes. If you are a glasses wear, a lash primer is a definite benefit for you because wearing false lashes can be very cumbersome under your frames. I am going to put a black mascara. I happen to be finishing off the Lancome Hypnose Drama Mascara. And if you have one, pull out a tube of blue mascara or go get one. Maybelline has this great mousse formula in blue velvet or royal velvet. Let me see. Navy velvet. Pardon me. Um, and you can also get Great Lash in Blue. Um, I think it's called Electric Blue or something. But when you wear purple eyeshadow like a silvery tone like this, blue mascara is incredible layered on top of your black to make your eyes go especially under glasses. Tip and trick, if you ever get mascara in the top portion of your eye like it, it splays up into your eye makeup, let it dry for a minute or two and then you can literally just flake it off your face. Don't worry about trying to remove it immediately with a Q-tip because all you're going to accomplish is smearing it all over your makeup. So just kind of let it dry and then you literally can take your fingernail and scrape it off.
All I do to, to set the rest of my makeup is I take my MAC Fix Plus spray, fan it in, and I am done. As far as lip products, I have several options for you. If you want a nude lip, my combo that I don't have anymore because I've used up both of them is NARS Cruising Lipstick with the Buxom Gloss in April. I loved those two together. That was my project pan. If you have Max Cream Cup, that is a beautiful combination because with the smoky eyes, you can get away with the lighter lip. Um, I'm personally, like if you want a Color Riche Balm or like a balm type, get yourself the Color Riche Balm in either um, Legally Regal from L'Oreal or you can use Provence Romance. If you like Revlon Kissful Balm Stains, you could use Darling. A lot of you have that. If you want to stick with the straight up orchid trend, you can go with Brazenberry from Maybelline Color Vivids. If you want dark berry, like if you like bright punchy lipsticks, the one I would go with is the Urban Decay Revolutionary Lipstick in Venom. And then if you're a straight up gloss girl, you can go with the L'Oreal. I have no idea what these things are called. They come in the gold packaging. This particular one is in Purple Prelude. So tons of options. I will go on and link each of these lip products in the description box below. Oh, if you like Revlon, I needed to include this. There is a Color Burst, I mean a Super Lustrous Lipstick, pardon me, in Berry Haute that is beautiful. I'll show you Berry Haute because I favored this combination. Or if you like pink, you can use Revlon's Primrose. Okay, so let's go on and do Berry Haute. Just a neutral purple. I absolutely love this combination. This is what I will wear for Mother's Day. And again, it harkens back to my Project Pan makeup last year. So it takes me back to memories of wearing this. And then I'm still keeping in my products without having to go buy anything new. So I hope you found that helpful. Stay tuned. I'm going to have Wear to Waitlist Wednesday. And I'm going to have a couple tips videos and I'm working on some more shop that stash because I know a lot of people are doing hauls. So if you are interested in project painting your makeup, I will have some more information for you. Welcome if you are new and like I said, stay tuned for next time. I'll see you. I'll see you then. Bye.